Welcome to this tutorial on Layer and Mask Fundamentals. It's part of the Photoshop Bootcamp. Here we have what you'll get as an empty image. If you were to go in File, New, and just select A4, basically you'll see it's just white, and you'll see here under Layers, uh, I'm in the Essentials workspace. Yep, the Essentials workspace. And over here on Layers, you can see that I've just got a white background at the moment. Now, the idea of Photoshop is as you construct an image, you actually add layer upon layer upon layer. So you, uh, every time you add something to an image, you put it on a new layer. For instance, if we were to select uh, the text and we were to type text, we start typing, you can see that it's automatically created a layer over on the right over here. Uh, you can see that we have a text type layer. So let's undo that with the Control Z key. And we might just, so that was Control Z, so we might just record that actually. Okay, so here's our important Photoshop shortcut keys, and we will add Control Z is undo. And if we go edit, um, you can see um, undo and redo. So Shift Control Z would redo. All right, so. What we might do is we'll create a new layer here, and you can do that a number of ways. You can click on the plus signal that says create a new layer down the bottom right. You can go layer, new, uh, and you can create a new layer. You can label it if you want. Um, very useful if you're creating a complex artwork. And you just go OK, and you've got a new layer. And actually nothing happens apart from the new layer appearing. You can't see any difference. You It just looks the same. So let's take our brush tool. And let's resize it. Now, the brush tool actually is an interesting one. In fact, a lot of these tools, you can resize them. I'll give you a shortcut that's very, very useful to learn. So if you hold your left, um, your left Alt key down and then click the right mouse button down, you'll see what is appearing on the screen appear. And it's very interesting. As you move it to the right, it gets bigger and bigger. So I'm moving my mouse to the right at the moment. I move my mouse to the left, it gets smaller and smaller. And as I move down, the hardness increases. And I'll show you what the difference of hardness is. So at the moment, that's fairly soft. So if I go like this, you can see it's all blurry on the outside. Now, if I hold my mouse down and I increase my hardness, you'll see that it's getting harder as I go down until it's really hard. So that's a really useful uh, key combination, which is Alt and Right Mouse Button. Uh, we might add that to our notes. Alt, Right Mouse button, adjust size and hardness of tool. So that's a great one. Uh, let's control Z, all of that stuff. So we've got our empty layer. Let's make our tool somewhat smaller. It's still a bit soft because soft tends to look a bit better. So we get something like that and we'll put a big Z here. So let's try and work out what we're seeing at the moment. We can see over here, we've got this Z, and I don't know whether you can see it or not. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, zoom here a little. You can see there's a sort of checkerboard effect behind the Z. And um, let's click this little eye behind the background. So what this is saying is if I click on the eye symbol, then it says don't display this layer. And you can see when I do that, you get this checkerboard effect. Now, checkerboard uh, means there's nothing there. So if I were to print this page as is, you would see on a white page, you would see two black Zs and nothing else. Uh, even if I were to fill this color with red, for instance, if I could uh, fill this layer with red, then it would still show nothing because the eyeball isn't there. If the eyeball is there, then the background color will show through. So the idea of a layer is, it's like when you add a layer, it's like adding uh, um, clear plastic and then you're painting on the clear plastic. Everything's pretty much transparent except what you paint and that's layers. You can add lots and lots of layers. You can move layers. You can drag them. So, for example, we might take this layer. We might uh, go layer. Uh, we might, I think we can right-click over here. Go over here under Edit. You can go Fill, and it's going to fill this layer. I can select Color, and I'll select Red, for instance. And I do that. And so the top layer is now red. And if you were to drag it down one layer, you can see that the Zs are on top because it's below the Zs. Uh, another interesting thing you can do is you can affect the opacity of a layer. So for instance, you can adjust that to any number you choose and it'll become semi-transparent. In other words, the red's slightly there, but you can also see slightly past the red to the white in the background. You can turn layers off, 
you turn layers on and as I say you can move them you can also delete them so I can take my background and just drag it down to the garbage bin and it will disappear and you can see now that you can start to see the checker box not white behind the red so that's basically how layers work not too complex not too bad um, you'll use them a lot and as I say you may choose to uh, um, label them it's often quite useful you can fill them using the edit um, edit fill and you can affect them in lots of different ways. Now, the second part of this is I would like to look at masking. You'll see masking referenced a lot when it comes to Photoshop. So let's have a look and see how masking uh, is used in Photoshop. To do that, we might create a new image, A4, and everything as is, create. All right, so we will go to uh, search here, and we're going to look for we're going to look for a face to start with. And I'm not going to muck around too much. I'll just take the first one. I will right click, copy image. I'll come over here and control V. Now, what I can do is I can resize this so that it's a bit bigger. I might do that. So there's a control T. Um, so if you press control T, it stands for transform. And you can do lots of things then. You can move it, you can shrink it, you can do all sorts of things but I'm going to transform it in size, um, which means pulling these boxes. So let's write that in our notes. Our notes here. Control T, transform, size, etc. And you guys can examine that later on. Uh, so let's just expand that without taking too much care. Okay, so we've got a face. Now, the interesting thing is when you transform something, you need to press enter at the end, okay? And so we've got a face there. So what you can see now is we've got a background layer. We've got a face. And what I want to do now is maybe go and search for a cat. And I'll grab maybe, maybe this cat. Right click, copy image. Now, I want to put this on a new layer, so I'm going to click the plus here. I could also go Layer New, but normally I click on the plus here, and I go Control-V. Nope, that hasn't worked terribly well. My copy mustn't have worked. Copy Image, and Control-V. Still doesn't work. Ah, Shift-Control-V. No, still doesn't work. Edit, Paste Special, Paste in Place. Doesn't work. For some reason, it's not copying my cat. Hmm. Curious. What if I click on it? Copy image, control V. Now we get the cat. I'm not sure why that problem popped up. We do the same thing. So you can see here that I'm on layer two now. I can do control T as before. I'll resize it. And I'll press enter. And so now we have a cat. Underneath that we have a face. And underneath that we have a white background. So if we were to take the eraser tool, which is this one here, and you can see that it's the E tool, so you may use an eraser. Perhaps with an S. Okay, you may use an eraser, and that does exactly what you think it would do. So if we select layer two, I'm editing layer two, I am Oops, I'm on paintbrush, so that's not what I want. If I select the eraser tool and I erase it, you can see that it's scraping the paint off layer two. Okay. If I select layer one and I click, I'm actually, oh, I haven't got the background shown, but if I show the background, you can see that I'm scraping off paint off that layer and I can see down to the background. So I'm looking through all three layers there down to the background in the middle. The eraser tool is a bit of a problem because when you erase something, Unless you control Z, you can't get things back. And this is where layer masks become very important because it lets you make something transparent without actually deleting the information. It sounds sort of crazy, but you'll understand soon enough when I give you a demo. So here we go. So if I select layer two, so I'm looking at this cat here. I'm on the cat layer. And I click on this symbol down here, if you can see it. That's an add layer mask. And what it does is it creates this little white rectangle here. And you can see that it's bounded by little white lines. And I can click the cat, I can click the rectangle. And so the rectangle is the layer mask and the layer is the, um, the layer itself is still there. 
And what the layer mask tells Photoshop is that wherever there is white on the mask, you should show the image as per normal. However, if there is black on the mask, then it should become transparent. Now at the moment, it will paint the foreground color. Our foreground color is white. And what we really want is to paint black. So if you remember, um, the X key flips the foreground and background color. So we could either click this or we could just press X, which I'll do. So I'm pressing X. You can see it's flipped these two colors. So now I'm in my paintbrush tool on the layer mask. And if I paint, you'll see that the top mask or the top layer is now becoming transparent. And so what you can do is you can make part of an image transparent so that you look down through that image to the next layer. You can also see I've got a soft edge. So if I uh, press Alt, Right, Mouse key, you'll see that uh, my tool is, I've got it set to a pretty soft finish. That's usually what you want for these sort of jobs. Um, that'll sort of put gray around the edges. Now you might say, say I go, I go too far. Um, so if this was the eraser key now, I would have problems recovering that information unless I did a control Z. But with the mask, you can see all I'm doing is painting black and white. So I can very easily press X for flip and I can repaint the top image back. So this is a very useful technique. And that's the essence of masking. Um, and you go, okay, well, that's maybe a bit much. So I press X again and just paint some white there. And that might be the effect you're after. So all I've really done is just affected this layer mask. I can still click on the layer itself and my paintbrush, it works as per normal. I can paint on top of my image, as long as it's not here, because if I paint on this part, remember this part of the image, I don't know if you can see very well, but this part of the image here is masked. So it says, don't display the middle part here, but the rest of the image up the top is white. So it should show that. And it does, it shows the red on top. And we can control Z to get rid of that. So that is how a layer mask works. The only other thing that I could say is that um, with layer masks, <clears throat> you can actually, rather than paint blank, you can also paint gray. So if you were to paint gray, it means it would be semi-transparent. And we'll test that out as well. So you can see here that I'm painting gray on the layer mask now. And that the background is half shining through which may be what you want or maybe not. Um, but you can play around with that. You can play around with dealing with gray and white and just making um, this see-through effect. That's about all I've got for this lesson. I hope it was useful. I'll post this up and um, add some more tutorials soon. See you in the next tutorial.